and a very warm welcome back to the channel of nonsense. Now, I don't know about you, but I've been waiting for mainstream premium car manufacturers to get their acts together and build decent electric cars with good build quality that just feel like the rest of their cars that aren't trying to be weird or unusual. And BMW kind of nailed it with the i4, which you might remember I drove in the racing rain in Munich back in October. Now I'm in sunny-ish England with the new, more affordable i4 eDrive 40, aka the single motor rear wheel drive one with more range, aka, aka the one you should probably buy. So I'm going to take you for a walk around, do a full review, take it for a drive and see if this is the i4 to have and if this is the future of electric normality. Yeah, when I say this is the more affordable i4, it's all relative. This one, the eDrive 40, starts from 52,000 pounds, which is about 10 grand cheaper than the M50, I think. And there are some quite big changes between this and the more powerful version. As I said at the start, this has only got a single motor, whereas the M50 gets two motors. And the effect on acceleration is this will only do 0 to 62 in 5.7 seconds. But as we'll get onto in the driving, uh, that 0 to 62 time is slightly misleading. This one has got 365 mile range, so that's about 50 miles more than the more expensive M50, which does admittedly do 0 to 62 two seconds faster than this at about four seconds. But yeah, do you want to save your money and be able to travel further in everyday driving, or are you more concerned with getting away from the traffic lights faster than a scalded kitten that's also on fire? But anyway, for your 52 grand, you get LED headlights. You do get 18-inch wheels as standard, but I think in the UK you can only get these in M Sport trim, which means you get upgraded to 19-inch wheels, which I think is part of the M Sport Pro Pack, which also adds darkened headlights, the M seat belts, and adaptive suspension. This one's got laser headlights, which I think is one and a half, two and a half grand as an upgrade, and I think it just looks quite normal, which I think is a good thing. We're used to the big kidney grill now, aren't we, as seen on the M4. But otherwise, I think it looks quite sleek. Now, these details, such as this little line down here, you can actually get those in bright electric blue. And the idea of that is to show where the battery is. Uh, it's got BMW's new fifth generation batteries and motors. And uh, yeah, you can spec those bits to be gray or black if you want. And you would also get them where the exhausts would normally be. So I don't know if you can see these bits around there. You can also get those in electric blue. Um, Put it this way, none of BMW's press cars, and I've just seen every single i4 they own, has those in blue. So I don't think you're gonna see many of those. It's more of a marketing brochure thing. Now, in terms of that battery, it is an 81 kilowatt hour usable battery, which is the same as the one in the M50. Um, but obviously this one's a bit less powerful, so it goes further and you can charge it at 200 kilowatts. So 10 to 80% takes 31 minutes on a DC fast charger. You can add 100 miles in 10 minutes in ideal conditions, which I guess would be a nearly flat but very warm battery. Um, in terms of looks, it's all designed to be aerodynamic. You've got the active flaps in the grille to reduce the coefficient of drag. Um, that's pretty much it. It looks like the Four Series Grand Coupe, which I've now driven in petrol form, so you go and find that video if you want to hear one of these with a straight six in it. In terms of the boot, it's 470 litres, and it opens electrically, and it's actually a pretty decent size. Often VVs, you are aware that there's stuff under there, but in this, I don't know, it's a pretty usable space, and I think you can happily daily this as a family car. Right, let's just quickly show you the back seats, because last time I showed you those, it was very rainy in Germany, and I was having to use a GoPro. I'll just open the back doors using the lovely flush fit door handles and excuse all my stuff in there. But yeah, it's a bit dark and dingy. I've actually opened the sunroof to try and get a bit more light in there. But yeah, you've got two USB-Cs down there and some basic climate controls for your rear seat passengers. Isofix is under these flaps here on the outer seats. And these are the um, seat belts. Yummy. Right, I'm going to hop in and show you what a six foot three idiot looks like in the back room in the back of the i4 for an adult is actually it's okay rather than amazing the rear seats do feel higher than you would think i wonder if that's something to do with the batteries um i've got room for my knees that's my driving position but foot room i'd want my driver to put his seat up or her seat up sorry or its seat up or their seat up a little bit so i can fit my feet under there if i close the door uh yeah it does feel a little bit claustrophobic because this pillar is quite far forward 
Um, but otherwise, it's fine in here. It'll be perfect for kids. Uh, nice little electric family car. Anyway, I'll show you up front because there's some really cool stuff over there. There. Up front, the i4 is actually quite a bit different from the new 4 Series Grand Coupe, purely because you get BMW's new all singing, all tansoning um, operating system, 8 iDrive system. So you get a massive, I think it's 15 inch screen there and a 12 inch one for the driver. And these are all tied into lots of very clever things like the re adaptive regenerative braking. Uh, normal round steering wheel, you get it heated. All of them come with rear parking camera as standard and plenty of kit without having to add loads of options on and you get a blue start button and a blue gear knob because it's electric but yeah this infotainment system wireless carplay and android auto is the best in the business bar none and i just want to see bmw roll us out across more of their cars now as i'm sure they will because it is just fan bloody tastic anyway that's probably enough about the interior let's take the drive 40 for an e-drive 40. All right, let's pretend I've just bought this BMW i4 eDrive 40, which obviously I haven't because I'm a journalist and I can't afford a Honda Jazz. Foot on the brake, hit the start button, and it thong, thong, thongs into life to tell you it's electric and it's ready to go. Back into D, and off you go. It pulls away really smoothly. Obviously, it's an electric car, so it hasn't really got a normal gearbox. One thing I didn't tell you when I was doing a walk around of this is this doesn't have air suspension. The M50 i4 has air suspension on the rear axle. And to be honest, I've been driving this for a few hours now. I can't tell the difference. It's got adaptive dampers that you can flick between comfort and sport. So you can stiff it up and soften it off between two settings. But otherwise, I don't know why they bother putting air suspension on the M50 unless it's a lot heavier at the back. I don't know why it would be. It's got the same battery, it's got the same rear motor. But anyway, the ride in this is really good. And what struck me when I drove this, and I drove this originally back to back with the new iX, the big SUV that everyone hates the look of. And what impressed me the most is how refined they are. BMW, I think, is now world leading in terms of cabin refinement for electric cars. They are so quiet. I was bombing along at 120 miles an hour when I was in Germany, obviously, and you barely hear any wind noise or road noise. Yeah, I'm doing 60 miles an hour on quite a bumpy road. It's so cosseting, I could probably fall asleep. But when we get some twisty bits in a minute, I'll show you that it's actually quite fun to drive as well. Now, 060 is 5.7 seconds. We should talk about the speed of it. If I put it in sport mode and slow down because there's no one behind me, we can actually do a cheeky little launch. Let's stop. Right, 0 miles an hour, floor it. Instant shove, but it's not massively quick. That's 30, 40, 50, 60. So yeah, once you've got over, say, 30 miles an hour, it's fast. It's really proper rapid in the mid-range. And if I was to slow to 50 and floor it, hang on, where's 50? Yeah, it really punches you back in the seat and that is faster than 60 miles an hour now. I don't think you need the M50, unless you just want to win all of the traffic lights, grons, prixes, just get the E-Drive 40 and take that extra range. Obviously, it doesn't look quite as cool. It's not quite as sporty, but do you really care? It's a practical family electric car. Right. I should talk about the practical things, really, shouldn't I? The view out the mirrors is good. The view out the back in this mirror is okay. That rear window looks like a crescent moon. It's quite slim at the back, like an old Mercedes CLS almost. And the headrests in the rear, you need to flip down so they present a nice thin profile. Uh, if you flip them up, they block quite a lot of that rear view. So if you've got rear seat passengers, you'll see a lot less out of the back than is ideal. Um, but yeah, otherwise this is super easy to drive. The adaptive regenerative braking, BMW reckons, means 90% of the time you need to slow down. I'm coming up to traffic lights, there's a queue of cars. I'm not touching the brake. The car just knows how much to regen from the brakes to make sure I don't crash into that car. It's very clever. It's like adaptive cruise control, but it's on all the time. But it's smarter than adaptive cruise control. It adjusts your braking for upcoming speed limit changes, for upcoming junctions. If you've got a route plugged into your sat nav and you know it's turning right in two miles, it will slow you down just before you get to it. It's really remarkable and you don't think about it until you realize that you've driven for half an hour <laughs> without touching the brake pedal. It's very clever and it does show you when you're doing it and you can turn it off by just knocking this across into B and that is normal regen. So you lift off the accelerator and you get a set amount of slowing down this. I'm going to leave it an adaptive because I'm a modern man. <laughs> I'd say in sport mode you do get that slightly duff 
I'm an electric car composed by Hans Zimmer sound effect. But I think you can turn it off if you fiddle through the menus a bit. BMW's made this really customizable. And I can't bang on enough about how good this system is here, the new iDrive system. I just love it. It's so easy to use, it's so sharp. It's got tons of information in if you want to go digging for it, but actually in day-to-day -day use, it's lovely. And the screen is big enough that you can have several things up at once and still see where you're going. Very clever. Oh yes, I've got head-up display as well. Very big, very bright. It shows me that I'm in a 60 limit, but there's a 50 limit coming up. It tells you both of those things. So it tells you of upcoming speed limits, upcoming junctions, stop signs, etc., etc. And if you've got the sat-nav plumbed in, a route rather, plumbed into the sat-nav, it will show you a very detailed map of the upcoming roads, which is really useful if you're in a town that you don't know very well. Right, I'm on one of my favourite biking roads in the south of England. It's the A272. If you come at a weekend in the summer, it's full of motorbikes riding like knobs and lots of police trying to stop them riding like knobs. Today, there's just a man in an electric BMW driving sensibly because this is going on YouTube. But yeah, I can talk about how the body doesn't roll when you go around a corner at 60 miles an hour. It just grips and goes round. And I think actually feels a little better turning in than the M50 did. And when you get on the power, you sense that the power is only going to the rear axle, but it doesn't skid around or anything. Even in sport mode, there is a traction mode, so it's almost like M dynamic mode, and that does let the back axle skid out a bit. But it's not as entertaining as the M50. That does little sideways off every roundabout. Off every roundabout, rather. I can't speak today. It's a good thing to drive, basically. The steering is its not too light. Hasn't got any feel because it's a modern car. I'm not going to whinge about that. But it just goes where you want it to go. And you can hoof this down a country road nice and quickly. Now, when I was back in Germany, again, as I keep mentioning, it was raining a lot. And the M50, I found, would understeer really early in the wet. Now, I can't remember what tyres they were on. But this... On dry roads, there's none of that. There's absolutely none of that. I don't know how much of that is down to the fact this doesn't have a big heavy motor over the front axle like the M50 does, but this to me, on dry roads at least, is the sweeter handling car. I probably need to get an M50 out this afternoon and back to back and find out, but I'm probably too lazy to do that. Right, I think I've waffled on long enough about how well this drives. It's really comfortable, really refined. It's exciting enough when you want to hoon it down a road and I just really, really enjoy driving these. I feel like it's an enjoyable car to drive and you don't think, oh, it's boring because it's electric. You think, actually, this has a nicely balanced chassis. You can't say that about many electric cars which are just designed to go fast in a straight line. Anyway, back to you, Tim, for an outro. So, in conclusion, would I have the eDrive 40i4 over the M50, all single dancing really fast dual motor one? Yeah. Yeah, I would, purely because once you're moving, this feels pretty much as fast. It's seriously rapid, it drives just as nicely, and you don't really miss that air suspension on the rear axle or the motor on the front axle. It just feels really nice to drive. And when it comes to electric cars, I think range is the most important thing for a lot of people. This is technically 350 miles of range. This one is only showing 280 miles to a full charge. Obviously, journalists like me have been ragging it senseless. Um, so it's probably been uh, averaged down a bit. But if you think about it, the M50's got an average range of 300 miles according to the brochure. So it takes 70 miles off that, and it's only 230 miles, if that makes sense. So yes. I'd probably just get this one and save a bit of money. Very good car though, probably one of the best normal feeling electric cars I've ever driven. So hopefully we'll see more of these on the roads. Hopefully that has been a helpful video or vaguely entertaining. If it has, please hit like and you'll help me feed my family over Christmas. If you haven't, then also hit like because my children really like food. Thank you for watching. Please call me Ein Schnelles Supergeil Sausage first in the comments slightly lose my mind it's near the end of the year and do subscribe because there's more car nonsense coming in the new year goodbye i've got a crippled hand because my daughter broke it she's two